Does Liz Truss have an image problem? Some say our new Prime Minister's a little bit wooden and she needs to loosen up, show a more human side. Others wonder where her accent's from, given that she grew up in Leeds, Paisley, Oxford and Canada. One person who's studied the new Prime Minister's voice closely and that of many of our leading politicians is the actor and TikTok star Maggie Foster. And here she is, miming to a speech Liz Truss once gave about British apples and wait for it... Pork markets. <laughs> I am infatuated with British food. We have never had it so good. We are growing wheat more competitively than the Canadian prairies. We're producing more varieties of cheese than the French. And we are selling tea to China. Yorkshire tea. In December, I'll be in Beijing opening up new pork markets. At the moment, we import two thirds of all of our apples. That is a disgrace. I want our children to grow up knowing the taste of a British apple. And I will not rest until the British apple is back at the top of the tree. <laughs> well, I have to say, in the GB News First, I'm delighted to be joined here in the studio by none other than Maggie Foster. Maggie, we're belly laughing here. Um, this started for you during lockdown, didn't it? You, you got interested in looking at politicians, how they speak. You do an amazing Pretty Patel. Your Caroline Flint is astonishing. Your Emily Thornbury, um, uh, really, really incredible. What's it like mimicking Liz Truss? What were you trying to pick up on when you watched her, listened to her in order to... It's only funny because there are flashes of familiarity. Obviously, you're, it's a pastiche. But what was it that you looked for in Liz Truss? Um, well, it's actually quite funny because when I was doing the um, TikToks, I tried to not really actually watch them, like, their mannerisms. So I wanted to, like, bring a character out mm. from what I sort of listened to. Um, but I just think that, like, politicians in themselves are, like, quite awkward. Yeah. And what they say and, like, she, like, in that whole um, conference speech, she just paused so much. It was so <laughs> awkward. She's actually really lovely. I've met her once yeah. before and she's actually really, really sweet. But it was just an awkward, like, moment. I was just like, it's quite funny. And everything she just said, she was just like, like... <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wanted to, like, create... And she was talking about food and I was like, she's definitely, like, a chef. So let's, like, throw her an apron on and... <laughs> yeah, create some pork markets. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've met a few times as well in, in my sort of, as a journalist. It's my job to, particularly when she was chief secretary to the Treasury, I'm mainly an economic journalist. And it was really important that I got to, to talk to her. I actually think she's better in small groups. I watching that conference speech, she was good when she threw the script away and was just yeah. responding in the leadership contest. Yeah. When she was on TV, she got off the script. Then I thought her real personality came through. But she's never going to live down that pork market speech, no, is she? Know. And, and you know, her, sort of her obsession with cheese. cheese. <laughs> exactly. More cheese than French. Um, yeah, no, I thought that uh, her conference, she was much more confident. I think she, like, you can definitely see, like, a change in, like, her confidence and things like that. But I think she did well. I mean, yeah, obviously she hasn't gone to the best start, but... I've got faith in the, uh, Liz, Liz, mm. Liz, so, mm. yeah. Victoria, as, as, <laughs> as, as a woman, do, do you, you're not here to talk politics, but as a human being, as a citizen, do you, do you warm to her? Um, I mean, you've got to admire her ambition, right? Yeah, I think you have a point in the fact that I don't think she is the best showwoman, is she? She seems a bit rigid up there when she's um, giving political speeches. But obviously, she is extremely intelligent and very ambitious to have got to where she's got to. Um, I think maybe she just needs to somehow let some of her personality shine through. Because I think the same was the case, actually, with Ed Miliband, because I've listened to his... The former podcast. Labour leader, of course, yeah. And he has a fantastic personality when you listen to him when he's chatting with a friend, you know, in a kind of a casual podcast format. Um, but then when he was um, the leader of the Labour Party, he wasn't really seen as a charismatic leader. I think Gordon Brown was like that, going mm. to a former Labour leader. Amazing in small groups, almost electric, sort of one-on-one, one-on-two, one-on-three, but 
as soon as the TV cameras came out, sort of deer in the headlights. You've got to be able to do it on telly, right, if you want to be a politician. Yeah, and they often have their sort of agenda that they have to get through in an interview and they sort of almost ignore the questions and say what they need to say. Like a robot, yeah. But I think the general public have caught onto that now a bit and they're not as sort of stupid or a bit more insightful than maybe they're given credit for. Justin, briefly, showing our age, we'll remember when Mrs Thatcher came to the fore, emerged as Tory leader in the mid-70s and then yeah. indeed as Prime Minister. She was pretty awkward oh, at the beginning, wasn't she? She was absolutely dreadful. As my mum would say, as awkward as two left shoes. <laughs> <laughs> if she was awkward, she was coming out as being so crass, uh, particularly when you dealt with it, all the old Tories. And, of course, they were very happy to take the mickey out of her. Um, but she, actually, then as soon as she realised, actually, they had to sort of quickly be... Someone got hold of her and said, right, well, stop, change this, change the clothes, change the style, and you know, she warmed into it. But mind you, even old Blair, I remember him, he was actually being taught by Mandelson. When he come out of the house, uh, you actually, and you look up, up, up there at the third floor of the building, even though there isn't a building there, because yeah. that's your best sight. Yeah, yeah. And he would do it every time. Just, just wave to nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. The no, theatre of politics. Right. You know all about the theatre of politics. Y your TikToks have had incredible numbers. It's, it's shot you to... A, fa a fame of sorts. You, are you, are you going to carry on doing them? Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. They're so crazy. brilliantly produced. Well, actually, I was just about to say, like... Meghan Markle with the little violin. <laughs> I love the Someone violin. Someone said to me it should be smaller. The violin should be much, <laughs> no. much smaller. Um, but, yeah, I think with, like, um, what we're talking about with uh, sort of presence with politicians speaking, I think, like, celebrities like Meghan Markle, when you hear her talk, it's very rehearsed. Yes. And it's very, very different from politicians. And I think that... I don't know if they get media training or whatever, but I think that's... It's quite that. That's why they're a bit more awkward politicians because I don't think they're as trained as like an actress or yeah. X, X Y Z. So, but then those sort of Americanisms don't quite translate to the UK. Yeah, it always I mean, goes the other way. A bit too polished. It's yeah, it is too polished, yeah. and that's why she comes across <laughs> sometimes quite fake. And she's out of government for now, but I'm sure she'll come back. Why do you portray? Pretty Patel with a cigarette and a bottle of gin. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, first of all, she did actually work for Diageo, which is an uh, alcohol brand. So oh, she did actually yeah. work, for, and that's why the bottles change, and I get different <laughs> Diageo brands on every bottle. But also because I was listening Great. to it, and she just has, like these massive inhales, like, I'm like, she's definitely having a cigarette. Like, <laughs> so then I was like, just put her in some trackies. She's like, a, she's like a teenage Completely girl drinking. It's, it's, it's basically me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like phone. Calls home from university. Are you smoking again? No, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's why she was a teenager. But I'm sure she is pretty drunk all the time. Well, Maggie <laughs> Foster, fabulous to have you here. <laughs> we you are me. all huge fans of your amazing little films. Keep them coming. Thank you. Because who? <laughs> certainly, the nation needs cheering up at the moment. So oh. great to have Thank you, you very on. Much,